okay, so I will continue uh, talking about uh, singular homology and cohomology. Okay, so um, first of all, I want to uh, to leave an exercise um, just about the properties of Tor and Ext that I defined at the end of at the end of last class. So, uh, for any pair of abelian groups. Uh, we have the following properties. These are the properties that uh, we're act actually using to compute the Tor one and the X one, and and it's what we need to know for for applying the universal coefficient theorems. So the first property, and this, these are all easy properties. I mean, they follow just by the definition that I gave uh, the last class. So the tor is commutative uh, if A or B is torsion free, then the tor is zero. Okay, third property, uh, the tor one finite abelian group C over NC with A is just the set of N torsion points of A. Okay. Four. So four, I will do it here. If A is a free Abelian group, then the x1 is 0. And 5, if b is divisible, This means that uh, for every natural number and for every element of B, there exists another element inside B such that uh, B is n times B prime. Okay. Then the x1 is also 0. And if uh, the last property is that uh, the Tor1 and the X1 are B add additive functors. Uh, that means that uh, they commute with, with the direct sum, with direct sums. At each factor, at each, uh, I don't know, how coordinate. OK, so this is an exercise. Uh, these are the properties we will use to compute these things. Uh, we, we are mainly interested in, in, knowing, in knowing when x1 or tor1 is 0. Okay. So I will uh, put now some theorems uh, about singular homology and cohomology that we will be using. Uh, I will not prove them because these are hard theorems. Uh, so the first theorem I 
want to recall this Kunis formula. Okay, so Kunis formula. So let x and y be smooth manifolds. Uh, then there exists an split short exact sequence so relating the homology of the product with the product of the homologies right So this is a Kenneth formula, in, for instance, is if uh, some of these, any of these groups is, I don't know, for instance, if we're not in, if we're in a field with coefficients in a field, this, this always will be zero because it has no torsion. This is, everything is torsion free. So we will have an isomorphism here where with coefficients in R, for instance. So another theorem, it's Poincaré duality. OK, so well, there are a lot of versions of Poincaré duality. Okay? I will just uh, recall some of them. And uh, well, I, I'm not giving too many details even in the formulation of the Poincaré duality, because <laughs> even for doing that, I will have to introduce a lot of things. OK, so let x be a compact uh, orientable smooth manifold. And so there exist a pairing, an intersection product. OK. It's defined between a, a, a P chain and a Q chain singular chain and gives you a p plus q minus n chain okay where n is the dimension of x and takes alpha a pair alpha and beta to a product okay it's something kind of like the intersection of these things i mean these things are represented by by some cycle. And in some way, you can always choose representative such that they are transversal in the intersections, and you intersect them when they are transversal. But to prove that is not easy. OK, so for now, we will just use that this intersection pairing exists. And it has the following property. OK, and if if x is also connected, connected, we have uh, that the h0 of x is, are the integers is of rank 1. And so the, then the product hk of x, hn minus k of x, to H0 uh, is 
uh, what is the word? Uh, unimodular. Okay, and, what's, and what does this mean? This means that uh, the, induced, the induced map, induced map that goes from HK X to home of H n minus k x to z is surjective with kernel the torsion part. Okay. So in particular, if it has no torsion, this is an isomorphism. So, okay, so using remark, so using the universal coefficient theorem, uh, we conclude that in the case we are taking a coefficients in a field, we have an isomorphism given by Poincaré duality, right? H minus K. Uh, HK is tor. And we also have a uh, an isomorphism with the, the cohomology, right? Okay. <coughs> For any field K, right? case that x is, well, this is for x compact, for k any field, and x uh, compact connected orientable. Okay. But we have uh, other versions of Poincaré duality that uh, we can use in the case we we don't have some of the of these properties for x. For instance, if x is non-compact, we also have a Poincaré duality theorem. We have an isomorphism HK of x with coefficients in a field k, with the dual of, well, with the cohomology, but with compact support cohomology. Right? And what is this compact support cohomology? Uh, so where H, let's say, let's say like HM of C, XK is by definition the cohomology of the following complex uh, C dot C of X uh, D, where this CM C of X is by definition the, I don't know, the deltas in CM of X such that they have compact support. And what does that mean? That means that there exists some compact subset of X uh, such that, uh, well, delta is not a good letter, uh, zeta, such that zeta of alpha is equal to zero uh, for every alpha 
in CM of K. Right? No. X minus K. Yeah. Everything that it supports outside, outside the compact K uh, goes to zero with this guy. And so this is a subcomplex of of the complex CM. Well, I think I didn't define it in this way. So CM of X is uh, the home of CM X to K, right? Um, so this is a complex. D is the dual of the boundary operator. And uh, we have this isomorphism. This is another version of Poincaré duality. And uh, certainly, this will be the same thing as the singular cohomology in the case that x is compact. Okay. And furthermore, uh, Furthermore, uh, we can drop the orientability assumption if we take k equal to c over 2c. Okay. So uh, these are the point duality theorems that we uh, are using the most of the time. Um, do you have any questions or about this class or the last one? No. Okay. Um, well, uh, now I want to introduce you a result that is. Uh, due to Eilenberg and Sternroth. Uh, maybe this result, you haven't seen it in a, in a regular course. And it's, uh, it's a result that is, it, it claims, it proves that, that you can define a singular homology theory in an axiomatic way. You don't need to, to construct it necessarily. You just can give a list of, of axioms and uh, from these axioms, you can derive the, the whole theory, the whole theorem, all of the theorems. So this is, uh, in order to do this, I, I need to introduce a lot of language. So definition. OK. Definition. Uh, let A, well, I will say that. A category, category A, is a, no. Let A be a category. Uh, everybody knows what the category is, right? It's just a collection of objects. It's a set and another set of morphism between this, these objects, of arrows, right? And it satisfies certain properties. The arrows, you can compose them, and you have always an identity for every object. And the identity plays the role as the identity element uh, with respect to the uh, composition operation, right? So we consider a category of pairs Topological spaces X A uh, such that A is contained in X. Okay. Uh, and the morphisms of A are given by functions, continuous functions, A 
f from x to y such that f of a is contained in b. OK? So we can restrict the function to a function between a and b. OK? Uh, we're, we say that a is an admissible category. it satisfies the following properties. <coughs> okay, so first one, uh, for any object, objects of the following lattice that is of xA and belong to A. So we have the lattice uh, it's empty empty uh, these maps are inclusions. So A empty, here we have X empty, uh, A A, X A, X X. Okay, so everything is in the category. Uh, second property, if we have a morphism, F is a morphism of A with, uh, let's say, the domain of F equal to XA and the rank, the range, range, Y, B. Then, then all the induced functions that we can produce using F and and inclusions are also in the category. So then all induced maps uh, using F and, and the restrictions And uh, no, uh, let's say and the uh, all the all the induced maps uh, given by F between objects of the lattice of X A and of YB are in A. Okay. Third so property if I is the interval 0, 1 with the usual topology and XA is any object of the category, then uh, the product. x a times i that is defined as x times i a times i it's an object and we have maps uh, the following maps g0 g1 from x times no x a 
to xa times i <coughs> given by g0 of x is x comma 0 and g1 of x is x comma 1. They are morphisms. And the last property is that there exists a point. There exists some P consisting only of, of one point. single point and every function uh, f uh, no and for every x an object of the category um, and any function what what do you mean by i p for instance um, you have a map here from from x right y right and you have inside it you have a and you have the restriction map from a to b and you have a lot of morphism that a lot of maps that you can construct using this diagram right you can construct a map from yeah for, for example you can take like x and empty going from to y and empty the same f, right? You have the f going from a empty to b empty, a a b b, right? And you have a lot of different maps. All these maps are in the category. Okay. For every object and any uh, and any map, f from p to x, uh, f is in the category. OK, so this is an admissible category. Uh, these are the kind of categories that we, we are using to produce an axiomatic uh, singular, or no, an axiomatic homology theory, or cohomology theory also. Okay. So examples of this, uh, so examples of admissible categories uh, are the category of all topological spaces. Uh, the category of uh, all triangula tri triangulable spaces. Okay, with continuous functions. And uh, the category of smooth manifolds. Smooth manifolds. Uh, maybe with boundary. Okay, so this is uh, well, this is a subcategory of the triangulable, triangulable spaces. 
and uh, this is the category that we are interested in. Okay, smooth manifolds with boundary. But uh, uh, the theorem that I will give you now, that I will state now, uh, it holds in the category of triangulable space. So in fact, uh, all the things that I, am, that I have recalled about singular homology and cohomology, it, can, it should be done in this category, the category of triangulable, triangulable space. Okay, so here I need. In the, in the last one? Yes. You mean that pairs are manifolds? Yeah. With a smooth function. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the second one is not necessarily the boundary of the first one. Okay. okay. So definition, okay, let A be an admissible category so we say that a, an axiomatic axiomatic homology theory on a It's a collection of functors. A collection of functors uh, that assigned to H each object in the category an abelian group HK XA for K greater or equal than zero. Okay, so it is from A from A to the category of abelian groups uh, satisfying the following action. I have already said that it is, they, they are functors, okay? So uh, they have to map the identity to, to the identity. They have to, to commute with the composition. They are covariant fact, uh, functors. Okay, so the first axiom is that there exists a connecting homomorphism. Okay, the, the boundary operator, right? HK of XA to XK minus one of A. And it's such that for every morphism, from XA to YB, uh, the following diagram <laughs> commutes. So it's, I have the map induced by the morphism HK of XI to HK of YB. I have here the connecting connecting morphism, HK minus one of, of A, HK minus one of B, 
And I also have the map here induced by the same morphism. So this commutes. Okay. The second axiom is is called the exactness axiom. And says that uh, for every pair xa in in the category, the following sequence is exact. So it's the sequence of the pair, right? So we have here hk plus one of the pair, the connecting morphism to HK of A, HK of X, HK of XA, and so on. Here, these maps are, let's say, IK, JK, where I from A to x and j from x to xa are the inclusions. Uh, here I, uh, I forgot to mention something, a uh, notation that I'm using is the following. Uh, x is for me the pair x empty. Okay, uh, I think you, maybe you realize that. I mean, this is the notation, I, because the objects of the category are, are pairs, OK? So this is what I mean here. And when, when I'm talking about f from x to y, is is saying that f goes from x empty to y empty, OK? So we have the exactness axiom. Uh, the third axiom is the homotopy axiom. So for Fg, uh, two morphisms that are homotopic, so such that there exists another morphism from xa times i to yb, such that uh, g0 composed with h is equal to f, and g1 composed to h is equal to g. This is the same as saying that they are homotopic, uh, with a homotopy in the same category. Then. The induced maps are are equal for every k. Okay, so this is the homotopy invariance property. And the last, no, this is not the last. The fourth axiom. is the excision the excision axiom so if we have a, a three spaces u contained in a contained in x such that uh, the closure of u is contained in the interior of a then the inclusion so it is x minus u a minus u inside x a induces an isomorphism hk x 
minus u. A minus u is isomorphic to HKXA. So this is the excision theorem. Okay. And uh, the last, no, well, the last action is the dimension action. Okay, this is for the point P. Uh, all the cohomology are are trivial, right? For every k bigger than zero. And uh, by definition, the uh, group, the coefficients group, is defined to be h0 of p. OK? So these are the axioms for a, for a homology theory in an admissible category. So beside these axioms, there, are, there is an extra axiom that we have to add it in, in a special case. So 6 here, star. This is the Milner additivity axiom. So in case uh, the category uh, admits objects uh, corresponding to objects, let's say, x uh, corresponding to a disto uh, an infinite disjoint union. Elements uh, of open open subsets in the category. <laughs> so for a in some uh, a, uh, then the then the inclusions. say I alpha of x alpha inside x uh, induce, uh, let's say, I alpha k from xk of x alpha to xk of x, uh, which give a decomposition direct some decomposition. HK of X is equal to the sum of <coughs> in A HK of X alpha. OK. Any questions so far? <laughs> OK, so what's the important thing about all this is that uh, we have the following theorem due to Eilenberg and Stern rule. Uh, so in the category, 
of triangulable spaces there exists a unique homology, axiomatic homology theory. with a given a coefficient group. So this is saying that the, the most important the theorems of the singular homology theory are the exactness axiom, the homotopy axiom, the excision, and the mineral additivity with, with this you can, well, in some sense, <laughs> uh, you hope that this, this, this have, well, this have all the information you need to in order to produce any other theory, theorem about singular homology. Well, that's not true. <laughs> that's not what you do in fact. But, well, it's, it's an interesting point of view. Uh, so, well, I'm using this in order to uh, have the opportunity to, to state all these results, that we will be using them. And, uh, and this is like a smart way to skip all the proof of, <laughs> of all these results also. We just assume them as axioms. Okay, an exercise. So exercise two, um, so using uh, Eilenberg Stenrode axioms, uh, proof the following results. So first of all, uh, for any a three of topological spaces <laughs> of triangulable spaces. There exists a long exact sequence. So this is our so these, these are, are easy uh, results to prove just using directly the axioms, okay? So this is the inclusion. Again, the inclusion. And here there exists some, <coughs> some kind of boundary map. Uh, beside that, we have uh, the major Vietoric sequence. The major Vietoric sequence for U, B, containing an X open set in a triangle level space. Uh, we have a major butori sequence so i will put it here hk of u intersected with b hk of u plus hk of b hk of u union b and HK minus one, you intersected with B. Okay. Uh, well, a remark is that we can do something very similar, 
similar, similar <laughs> to define an axiomatic cohomology theory. Uh, we just need to reverse all the arrows in, in the axioms. And the eilenberg row theorem is also true. So, well, this theorem uh, provides you with a tool to prove that uh, a lot of different homology or cohomologies that you can define in a very different way, uh, they are isomorphic. Okay, so, uh, remark. Reversing arrows, we can define an axiomatic cohomology theory uh, we also have a cohomological version of Eilenberg Stenro theorem Okay, and I'm putting an exercise here, exercise three. Uh, so given a homology theory HK is a home of HK to the integers, uh, cohomology theory. Cohomology theory. Okay, and if not, so hey, we, why? Which axiom? Which axioms fail? Okay. Uh, well. So the last thing I want to recall before entering in, in the theorems of the course uh, is uh, the Tom isomorphism, okay? I will provide a definition. I will define the, the Tom isomorphism in, in singular homology. Uh, it seems to me like this is not too standard. I mean, I haven't seen it. it in too many books. In fact, I have only one reference for this, and it's an article. And the other thing is that, uh, well, uh, I think that this theorem, uh, you can find it in, set in different books. Uh, they are um, uh, what's the word in English? <laughs> well, they attribute them to different authors, not just to Tom. I mean, in some when when you see it in the Rom cohomology, it's usually to, to to see as the Tom isomorphism, but there are other cohomologies where where they talk about the Geisen isomorphism or the Lerai map or class. So <laughs> I will state it like uh, the Lerai Tom Geisen isomorphism. Okay, so nobody complains. Uh, well. Maybe it should uh, define it. Theorem de definition. Okay, so consider X be a 
movement and orientable. Smooth manifold. Okay. Ah, well, well, I will give the reference after that. Okay, and consider y. Y containing x, <laughs> a, an orientable. A, Oh, let's say a closed uh, orientable submanifold. I'm not sure if I should a closed orientable submanifold of co dimension C. Okay, so the Tom. Let's say the letter I, Tom Geisen, uh, map, tau, that goes from H, K, minus C of Y to H, K of X relative to X minus Y is defined in the following way. Well, here we have the convention. So where we put uh, hk minus c of y equal to 0 for if k is less than c, OK? Uh, OK, the Lerton weissen map uh, is defined as follows. Okay. Okay, so uh, consider a Riemannian metric. On X. Okay? Any Riemannian metric. So uh, let uh, let E be a tubular neighborhood. y inside x. So what does this mean? Uh, this means that we have a, uh, there exists a f, an embedding, uh, an embedding uh, such that where, let's say, well, I don't know. Maybe uh, this is B. OK. An embedding where E is the normal, normal bundle of Y inside X. And uh, B is equal to F of E is uh, an open neighborhood. y in x. OK, so this exists. So by the excision, by the excision axiom or excision property, so here note that uh, x minus uh, f of e bar is contained in the interior of x minus y. Okay, 
So this is because, uh, well, f of a is open. So this is closed. And y is closed, so this is open. So this is just saying that y is contained in, in the neighborhood, a tubular neighborhood. So we have that uh, h k <coughs> of x relative to x minus y is isomorphic to h k of f of e uh, relative of f of e minus y. OK? So we can assume that x is equal to f of e, right? So we, we, we reduce uh, the case to, we reduce ourselves to the case where x is, in fact, a, a vector bundle, and y is the zero section of the bundle. So we can, we can assume x is a vector bundle. with zero section y. OK. So now take any delta in hk minus c of y. OK. So what, what we will do is to uh, attach to every point of delta, we will attach a a C disk transversal to the to the zero section. I mean, it will be a C disk inside the fiber of the vector bundle, right? So to every point of delta, we attach a C disk centered at the point. A transversal to y. Okay, so this is something like like this. So you have here x, and you have here y, and you have here delta, right? And what you're doing is to, to take like a transversal disk. Well, the code I mentioned here is one, so a transversal disk is, is just an interval. So here we, we will have something like this. Right? So this will be like T of delta. And T of delta will be a <coughs> increase in the dimension by C. So it, it, will, it, it will give you something in HK of, of x. But the boundary it will be in x minus y. OK? This is like T of delta. Okay. Uh, well, some some other examples, some more pictures about the uh, about how does does the the tom isomorphism looks like. So here are some pictures. <coughs> So we can take x as the whole plane. We can take y as a point in the plane. And uh, we can take delta as the point, right? So the Tom class will be something like a circle, right? 
the co-dimension here of y is 2, right? So we have to add a 2 disk. So this will be tau of delta, right? But if we have, for instance, uh, something of co-dimension 1, so if we have y something like a circle here, and we take delta to be the circle also, uh, so the t of delta will be something like this. This will be the t of delta. Right? Well, here I'm taking well, I don't know, delta equal to the class of y. Also here. Uh, okay, something uh, three di three dimensional. So we can consider x the whole three space. We can take y of co-dimension two. Here circle and the uh, delta also again the class of y and the tom class will be <coughs> something like a, a torus right this will be the tom class this will be the disk the transversal disk that we are attaching at each point T, right? And uh, a co-dimension one, well, a co-dimension three, in dimension three, it will be a point, it will give you a whole ball. And co-dimension two, Dimension one example here in dimension three might be something like take here x, this is y, you take here delta, Let's say this is delta, and we have the term class here. This is T of delta. Okay, so this is what this looks like. And um, okay, well, on the other hand, uh, what is the inverse of this map? What should be the inverse? What should be the inverse of this map? So if we have delta here, we enlarge it. And how we recover delta from tau of, of delta? We just need to intersect it again with, with y, right? If we, in, in each of these examples, if we intersect t of delta with y, we recover delta. So this will, will take something like the class of a, a singular chain, a singular cycle, and it will take, take it to alpha intersected with y, but whenever you have a good repre representative of this guy, right? For alpha uh, transversal uh, representative, a uh, representative transverse to y. Okay. Uh, so in order we we have like a well-defined intersection. <coughs> okay. 
Um, so what is the theorem? Well, the theorem is that this is an isomorphism and with inverse uh, nu, right? So theorem. T is equal to a new inverse. Okay. Uh, any questions? <coughs> About this? No complaints. No complaints. OK, uh, well, so this theorem, we will use it a lot. This is, in fact, the theorem that we'll, we will be using uh, most of the time to prove all Lefschetz theorems. And um, we're, using it, we're using it in the following way. So uh, let consider the long exact sequence. the pair x, x minus y. OK, so we have the long exact sequence given by the inclusions. So it's uh, xk, well, let me see, xk of x, I want here, xk of x minus y, xk of x relative x minus y, xk minus 1 of x. And so on. Okay, so we have we have now an, an isomorphism here. That is the Leram Tom Geisen isomorphism, right? Tau with H K minus C of Y. So and these are just inclusions. So here I have let's say A I K. So here I have a composition. Uh, this is a uh, new composed with IK. And here I have another map. This is the boundary map. And I have a composition here. So this tau goes from here to here. And this is tau composed. No, it is delta composed with tau. Okay. So I can um, replace the relative homology group with this uh, singular homology group of Y. So this modified, this modified exact sequence, exact sequence is called uh, the Leray Tom Geisen sequence. The Leray some guides and exact sequence. Is the base of that sequence for the pair? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I made a mistake here. No, this is <laughs> super bad. Uh, this is this, right? X minus y, x minus y, right? Sorry. You're right. Thanks. OK. Um, so uh, what, what are these maps? I mean, what, what, what this map, what does do? This map from H k of x to H k minus c of y. This is this is just like taking only nu, right? I mean, we're taking a guy here. We're we're looking for an element here, but 
it is not anymore in the relative homology. So it doesn't have any boundary in x minus y. And we take a, a transverse, transversal representative of, uh, with respect to y, and we intersect it with y. Right, so this is the, this is the intersection map. Right, and just take a class and intersect it, well, a cycle and intersect it with y transversely. And what is this map? What does this map? So in these examples, for instance. <coughs> so here you will have delta, you take the Tom class, and then you take the boundary. So you're just adding here where like two copies of, of delta. But the, the two copies correspond to two points. You're taking the product, <laughs> the product of delta with two points. And two points is like the zero sphere, right? So here you are, well, here you, you can see it better, right? Well, wh what you will have here will be the torus, but the empty torus, right? So you're just uh, attaching to a, each point of the cycle, you're attaching a circle, right? So this map is just uh, attached, uh, like, like pasting along, uh, along, let's say, delta. If you have a delta here, uh, c minus one dimensional circles, uh, spheres. C minus one spheres. Okay. Um, what else? Well, beside that, you can construct a, like a relative intersection, a relative version of the intersection map. So this is the last remark. So if you take x tiled, a closed orientable oriented a submanifold of X a, which intersects intersects Y transversely. of co-dimension C tile in X. Uh, then we have an intersection map. We also have an intersection map. So nu from HK X relative to Y to X K minus C tile to X tile relative to X tile intersect with Y, right? And it's the same map. I mean, just take a, a alpha to alpha intersected with Y. No, with, sorry, here I, I changed these things with X tile. And um, where alpha is transverse to <coughs> x tile with boundary in y. Well, this is more or less all the machinery we need to start. So next next class, uh, we will start with Lefschetz theorems. Okay, any question? Okay, references.
So references for um, for almost every theorem theorem in homology theory is the I think the name is singular homology theory. Uh, this is Massey, Massey's book. Uh, well, the reference for the eilenberg stern road theorem is uh, foundations of algebraic topology. This is a book, eilenberg stern road And the reference for for the Leram Tom Geisen isomorphism is this topology topology do complement Assembly uh, algebraic projective uh, this is in uh, the following journal sign math uh, 1991, page 392. Okay, so these are the references. Well, I am sure that in Hatcher's book you will find like a lot of things. Not everything. Not. I'm. I'm, pretty, I'm not sure if this is not there. Maybe. Maybe this. But. I'm pretty sure that this is not there. Okay. <laughs>